Alright, well hey there guys, how's it going? This is Rex over here, and welcome back to yet another game tutorial, and today we're going to be going over grappling hooks. Woohoo! Okay, so this is actually a really fun mechanic, and I'm actually using an example that I found online because of its really simplicity kind of features, and um, just because it was really quick and really just, the whole example itself was a really nice example, and um, I guess, you know, kind of want to pass that out as well, because this is a really great example. Link down in the description if you guys want to go ahead and download it as well. It's free to download, it's on the YoYo Games website, free to trust, and, um, free to trust? <laughs> okay, anyway, let's just go ahead and get right into this thing here. So, basically what we have is a player right here. We can move left and right. Simple platform controls going on there. And, um, if we left click anywhere on the screen, you'll notice, boo, grappling hook option. <laughs> and so, you kind of get that little cool grappling hook effect there. And, um, sometimes, occasionally, we will get, like, a little wiggle. But, um, you just have to kind of wait it out or just click somewhere else on the screen or on the, uh, wall that you're grappling to. And it will go right away. But let's go ahead and if we right click, boo. We can just let go, or let go of the grappling hook there. And we can do this for any different kind of wall, and um, it will just kind of go everywhere. So this is really cool. And um, also, if you keep clicking on a certain spot on the map or room or whatever, you'll notice that you go really fast than you did before because you're grappling even faster. So that is a really cool effect, and I really like it. You can also kind of move in the air while you're grappling to go either faster through the grappling hook or kind of stay back a little bit. And, of course, you right-click. Boink. <laughs> there we go. We just let go of the grappling hook and fall back down. So, that's what we're going to be going over today, guys. Let's go ahead and exit out of here, get into Game Maker, and see what makes this thing tick. Boop. <laughs> okay, so... We're inside the Game Maker now, and um, we have some stuff already laid out for us. As I mentioned earlier, this is an example that I'm using. Again, link in the description if you want to go ahead and download it. Um, I'm not really sure if I'll put the code um, in the description. I might, but I might not. Um, <clears throat> just because the description is... Or, excuse me, the... Um, uh, the example, did I keep saying description? The example is in the description to download, so, yeah, go ahead and do that. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and just get right into this thing here. Um, SPR underscore U. So, basically, the example just calls you, um, the player, instead of saying SPR underscore player, which really doesn't matter, uh, for the sprite. However, if you do want to change that for the object, uh, you do need to change it for the code in here, but we'll get into that in a little bit here. So, um, this is just a, oops, <laughs> this is just a 16 by 16 little block here, and I just changed the color up. Up. And uh, some of the things here, I did little changes, I guess, just to fit my preferences, um, you know, for the code in here. It used to be, like, three different code blocks, uh, but I just put all the code into one code block. And I'll explain what this all does in a little bit here. And also, for this, uh, for those of you guys who think this looks overwhelming, uh, don't worry. It really is not once I go through it and explain it. So, um, you know, it's not really too uh, massive and monstrous as it may seem at first glance. But uh, anyway, back to these sprites here, so really nothing you need to do or worry about to the player. You can change its dimensions, it doesn't really matter, so let's go ahead and uh, feel free to do what you will with that. Uh, now, SPR underscore wall, uh, same pretty much uh, things. You can just go ahead and change the color as well as the uh, dimensions here, it doesn't really matter. Now, the SPR underscore rope, um, if you change the dimensions of this, uh, it will actually affect uh, how big it actually is um, in the actual game or example itself. Um, for instance, this is 4 by 3. If you went ahead and changed this by, I don't know, like 8 by 6, uh, you'll notice it gets a little bit bigger. And, oops, I forgot to color it in. Um, but basically what would happen is it would show up a little bit bigger on the screen itself. So just be wary of that. And SP underscore pixel, it is just a one by one pixel pixel, I guess. And um, I haven't really experimented too much around with this. I actually haven't really done anything to this. So I'm not exactly sure what it would do if you were to change the uh, dimensions of this. Uh, I don't think the color would really matter. But the dimensions, um, you know, I really don't know because I haven't really tested it out myself. So uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. Although I'm not exactly sure what it would do. But just remember, if you know if something goes wrong, just go ahead and change it back. And it should do what it's supposed to. But anyway, we'll go ahead and... Uh, uh, go right on to the LBJ underscore U, I was going to say SPR. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to go ahead and change the name of this, uh, you have to go into the code as well and make sure to change that. But let's go ahead and uh, we are in the step event code here and let's see what's going on. Okay, so actually from here all the way down to about to do here, or ah, here, uh, this is all just platform movement. Now if you already have your own, or own movement in your player, you do not need this. Um, you can just go ahead and delete it. That's just basic movement for uh, what goes on here. I've tested it without movement also, and it does work that way. So you don't really need the movement. It's just kind of extra with the example. So, whoops. All right, so let's go ahead and Control-Z that. <laughs> there we go. 
All right, now down here, uh, this is basically setting the gravity, and it's kind of like the platform movement, and um, if you already have gravity, you can go ahead and just kind of delete this here. Um, but this is basic gravity, and it's kind of setting it up in its own way, I guess. So in a way, you can try your own gravity without this, although I'm not exactly sure how smooth it would be uh, without this system of gravity here, but you can go ahead and give it a shot. Um, but all I know is this is definitely setting up gravity uh, for your player. So basically, that's what that's doing. Alright, so here is basically how fast your player is going to move when he's going towards the grappling hook. So basically when you shoot off that grappling hook um, and your player is going directly to it, uh, this is how fast your player is actually going to move towards that grappling hook. Um, you can, of course, change this value to whatever you want, say like 10 or maybe 11 or whatever. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it off to 5. Okay, and down here, um, this is basically setting up how your player is going to move towards um, the grappling hook. So you don't really need to change anything in here. Uh, it's basically just configuring how your player is going to move uh, towards the direction of your grappling hook. All right, and down here is pretty much the same thing. It's just kind of configuring and calculating uh, the grappling hook uh, length and stuff like that. And uh, it kind of corresponds with up here, uh, the movement towards that grappling hook. So nothing you really need to configure um, through these codes right here. Um, however, down here, you can change the uh, gravity values, um, which would just kind of make it less gravity and or more gravity. So I mean, you can go ahead and give it a shot here, but I wouldn't really change anything there unless you really wanted to or you really wanted some kind of a weird effect. But you can go ahead, if you're really curious, tinker around with uh, some of these values, these 270s here. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and uh, progress down here. So basically what this is, is uh, it's basically just smoothing out everything to make sure that the whole grappling system runs a little bit smoother. And so you don't need to change anything down here either. If you're really curious, you can go ahead and change up uh, this 0.2 value if you really want to. But it doesn't really do much. It's just kind of smoothing out the overall uh, movement and stuff of the grappling hook. All right, so that's pretty much how that works. Uh, now, the collision with the wall, uh, nothing special here. It's just a simple move to contact and a speed to zero uh, collision. You can, of course, if you already have your own collision with the wall, uh, put it in here or put it in D&D &D form. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just the default collision system uh, in, the, uh, in the example here. Okay, now the global left press. Uh, this is what basically creates your grappling hook. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what's going on here is it's basically just creating a grappling hook and uh, kind of destroying it though at the same time because once you create a grappling hook obviously your player is going to move towards it and you don't want your player to move towards it and have some grappling hook you know, trailing behind him so what's kind of doing here is just sorting out all of your grappling hook uh, kind of itself features and there's nothing that you really need to change here. Uh, I believe you can change these 13s, though, to make them a little bit higher. Um, if you want to, I believe they just changed um, some of the length uh, configurations. But other than that, there's nothing really else that you need to change here. Okay, now the global right press, uh, this is really simple. All it's doing here is just getting rid of the entire rope in general. So basically, no matter how much rope you have, as soon as you uh, press the right or click the right uh, key here, it's just going to go ahead and delete it. All right, now the wall, nothing too fancy going on here. All it is is just a simple wall and a solid. And for the rope, um, there is some stuff going on in here, and it is kind of weird to explain just because of the system that it uses. Um, but it is still very simple to explain, or it's rather to uh, kind of look at, I guess, because there isn't really a whole bunch of code to kind of keep track of. As you can see, we just have an alarm zero event going on here. It's just being activated. And uh, in the destroy thing here, so once it's destroyed, it's basically just going to configure that destroyation or destroyation. Is that even a word? I don't even know. Um, but yeah, basically it's just configuring what happens when it gets destroyed. Uh, nothing you really need to change here. Uh, basically throughout this whole entire rope, there really is nothing you need to explain or rather um, to kind of configure here. And there are some nice comments here, so if you get stuck and you don't really understand what's going on, they will kind of help you out with that. Um, so yeah, basically this isn't really just kind of configuring how close it is to the wall and what will happen if it gets uh, close enough. And in the draw, uh, this is just kind of drawing out the rope itself. So, you know, there really is nothing to uh, kind of get into here either. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, once you finish uh, kind of going through all that and stuff, what you want to do is just go ahead and place some uh, wall blocks or ground blocks, whatever, right underneath your player, just so he has something to stand on um, with that gravity, of course, and that collision. And just put your player anywhere you want. As you can see, I put him right here. And um, that's pretty much it. Once you go ahead and run your game, the same thing will just happen. Just have a little player here. You can move left and right, and we can just pew, 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 and stuff like that. So that's pretty much how it works, guys, and whoa.
jeez. Alright, so, yeah, that's pretty much the grappling example. Uh, kind of my tutorial, whatever. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, link down below if you want to go ahead and download the example. And, um, hopefully you guys enjoy the tutorial, hopefully it helps you guys out. And, um, you know, it definitely is a lot easier once you kind of get the hang of this and all, so... Um, I understand how it works and whatnot, but, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So, feel free to come and subscribe, all that stuff, you guys know what to do. And, uh, until next video, guys, this has been Rex Furry, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.